Judy Ann Alexander. Good thing Leslie's cough woke me in class this morning. I nodded off three times. Once more, Mr. Ward said he'd be bringing me a pillow. That's what I get for staying up late. Again. What choice did I have? Open mic Friday is today, and I'm not about to stand in front of the class in some funky old outfit. I didn't realize it would take me half the night to finish something new. I hope I can stay awake long enough to read my poem when my time comes. Me, writing poetry. What a scream. I'm not smart enough to be writing poetry in the first place, though Mr. Ward says I'm smarter than I know. Yeah, well, I wouldn't have bothered trying to write anything, except that Open Mic Friday is one time I know I can get Tyrone Bidding's attention. And I got a thing for Tyrone. Of course, he's got a thing for Tanisha Scott, like every other boy in school. Too bad we can't all have good hair and light skin. Who am I kidding? She's more than that. She's pretty, which I'm not, as my stepfather reminds me ten times a day. Like I don't know that from looking in the mirror or from having kids tease me about my blue-black skin all the way through school. But my body's good. Nothing wrong with me in that department. That's why I got to show it off. Wear clothes that accentuate the positive. The shorter, the better. And I don't even have to buy them. I can make them myself. It ain't much, but it's that's the one thing I learned from my mother, how to sew. Last week, I wore my patchwork denim skirt and vest with the red leather pockets that just about broke my sewing machine needle. Sheila was all up in my face telling me how cool I looked, like I needed her opinion. Why she's always trying to kiss up to black people is beyond me. Anyway, it was Loopy's compliment I listened to. She took one look at my outfit and told me she was jealous. Said she wished she could sew like me. Honey, I thought to myself, give me some of that pretty skin and hair of yours and I'll trade. Loopy has no idea how pretty she is. Used to see Raul and some of the other guys, black and white, sniffing around her. And does she notice? Don't look like it to me. Except for Raul. It's hard not to notice Mr. Latin lover boy. Anyway, Loopy says she already has a boyfriend. I'm thinking he's invisible, though. I never see him. He goes to another school, she says. Others say he don't go to school at all. That he dropped out a long time ago. That he's eight years older than Loopy. Eight years? But hey, it's none of my business. At least she's got somebody. I'm still working on that one. Meanwhile, I spend my weekends alone, holed up in a room with my singer sewing machine. I have been helping Mom mark and cut out patterns for as long as I can remember. I even helped her draw a few that Vogue never thought of. They should take a look at my sketch pad. Now, if I could just figure out how to design poetry as well as I design clothing, I could turn myself into somebody special. Wouldn't that be a neat trick? It wouldn't hurt if I could come up with something deep to write about like Shankara. I wouldn't want to have the experience of someone beating up on me, though. It's bad enough my stepfather talks about me like a dog. The few times my mother gets on him about it, he laughs it off and says he's just joking. I should cut his tongue out. See how funny he th thinks that is. Because there's sure nothing funny about being called ugly. So why does mom let him do it? Sometimes I think she loves him more than me. Otherwise, she wouldn't let him tear me down like that. One of these days, he's going to call me ugly, and I'm going to ugly myself on out of there. I don't know where I'll go, but it'll be far away from him. Then Mom won't have to worry about defending me, and I won't have to waste energy being angry because she hardly ever does. She's all right in private, though. She tells me to ignore my stepfather, says I've got to, a lot to work with, that I can make myself over with hair and makeup when I'm older. For now, I can barely get out of the house with lipstick. Meanwhile, I sit at my sewing machine and dream about the great transformation I'm going to make someday, as if I could use pinking shears to cut out a new face for myself. Right. Dream on. Cocoon by Judy Ann Alexander Her cocoon is see-through. Inside, she is busy with pattern and pinking shears. If the ears are too long, she'll snip them. If the mouth is too wide, she'll stitch up the corners. Her needle and thread hold more magic than any wand. With her chalk, she can outline a fine and voluptuous shape. The nape of the neck is a perfect place to tuck and fold. 
Our straight pins hold the skin together just so. A quick basting stitch lets her know where to set her seats, her cuffs, her hem. After all, her arms and legs mustn't be too long. She mustn't stand too tall. Perfect beauty is what she's after. She's already had enough laughter in her life. The day she clips her way out of her cocoon, the only sound she plans to hear is a deafening cheer.